I am Adil Kumar. Welcome to my series on trigonometry inequalities. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos and posting excellent questions. Here is a question from Bhuvneshwari. Bhuvneshwari, thanks a lot for posting this brilliant question and requesting to explain the inequality with the help of a graph. I am really happy to provide you with a solution and I hope many others will benefit from the same. I will also request other viewers to post their name or send an email to me with their questions whenever they are asking for a question to be answered. Now let us see how to solve this inequality which is cos of x is greater than or equal to minus half and less than or equal to plus half. To explain the solution, I will take help of two diagrams. One, we will first analyze the sine wave, the cosine wave in this case, and then see what does it mean that the value of cos x is between plus and minus half. So cosine function starts with the maximum value of 1, drops down to minimum value, then goes up and it's kind of like this, right? So that is how it repeats. The period for the function is 2 pi, right? So that is known to most of our students. So this is 0. We have a sketch of cos of x and the maximum value, as you know, is 1 and the minimum value is minus 1. When we say that the cos function should be between minus half and plus half, it means minus half will be somewhere here. Let me draw a line here. And positive half will be somewhere there, right? So we have one wave here, complete wave, slightly more than that I have drawn. One and a half wave you can see. Well, that is one wave, correct? So this is 2 pi. So the interval within which cos x is between minus and plus half is definitely this, right? So this is your value for half and that is your value for minus half. So we are looking for a solution which is between these two points. So that is the solution, right? And also when it rises, then again it is between these two points. So we are interested in finding these points. That is our approach. Now what are these points? So let us look into this wave on the coordinate plane. So, as you know here, all are positive here. Sine is positive, tan is positive in quadrant 3, cosine in quadrant 4. As far as the value of half is concerned, what we know is that cos of 60 is half, right? Let me draw a special triangle here to explain what I'm trying to say. So, if I have a right triangle where this angle is 60 degrees, in that case, cos value is half, right? So what we know here is that cos of 60 degrees is actually equal to half. So that is the acute angle. Perfect. So we can get the other angles also where it is negative half. Well, so that gives you, let me draw a line at 60 degrees. So 60 will be kind of like this. So let me draw this line and extend. Right. Similarly, the second 60 that is the in quadrant 2, 120 degrees will be kind of like this. Right. So what I'm trying to show you here is that this is, this much here is 60 degrees, right? And then it is 120 degrees. It is between plus and minus half for a value which is from, I mean, sorry, uh, I wanted to write 120 here. Uh, okay, 120 degrees is actually minus half, right? So this angle is 60 degrees and this angle here is 120 degrees. So our interest is in the area when it is between plus and minus half, which is this area. So in quadrant 1 and 2, that is the area when cosine function is between minus half and plus half. In quadrant 3 and 4, it is this area. Correct? 
So that is a result which is being shown right there. So if you are working in degrees, I could always write these angles as related acute angle of 60, right? So that becomes 240 degrees and this becomes 300 degrees. But if you want to work in radians, you could write this as pi by 3, 2 pi by 3, this is 3 pi by 3, that becomes 4 pi by 3, and this is 5 pi by 3, correct? In radians, that is going to be the result. So as you can see here, the starting is from 60 to 120 or pi by 3 to 2 pi by 3, right? So, so this region here could be written as from pi by 3 to 2 pi by 3, right? And then again from 4 pi by 3 to 4, 5 pi by 3. Now what we observe is that it repeats after pi of 180 degrees. Do you see that? So we could provide a general solution to this. That is to say that the cosine value is between plus and minus half for the angle which is pi by 3 to 2 pi by 3, right? 2 pi by 3. Right. Then again, between 4 pi to 5 pi by 3. So it repeats after every pi. Right. So we could write this as n pi. Do you understand? n pi plus this or n pi plus this. That becomes our general solution. Right. So including these points, since we have this inequality included. So in radians, I could provide the answer as n pi plus pi by 3 to n pi plus 2 pi by 3 cos of x is within minus half and plus half where the value of n could be 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Correct? If you take it 0, it is like pi, right? Well, it could be negative numbers also. We could take it integers also, right? So, let me write plus minus, right? But let's prefer to this because of symmetry, you could go negative side also. So we could write this as plus minus or we can say where n belongs to integers. Right? Mm -hmm. So that works. So we have the solution right here. If you are working with degrees, in that case, uh, n pi is like n 180n, right? 180 times n plus this angle is 60 degrees, right? 60 degrees to 180 degrees times n plus this angle is 120 degrees. So that could be a solution when you're working in degrees. I hope from these figures the approach is absolutely clear. So we began with the cosine graph drawn two lines between plus and minus half. Wherever they intersect those give you the boundaries for our solution. And we see that these boundaries are repeated after every pi of 180 degrees. And therefore, we can provide a general solution as given here. So that becomes the general solution. So I hope that helps. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and don't forget to mention your name so that I know exactly who's asking what. Thanks a lot for watching and all the best.